The First World War was a new kind of war. Millions of soldiers came face to face with the most modern killing technology, machine guns and artillery. By Christmas 1914, the army had a problem. Fighting on the Western Front had reached stalemate. The public expected a technological solution. They had one in the air with the aeroplane and the fighter ace. They had one at sea with the submarine. Uh, Wells had predicted, and the prediction was very well known, uh, that it would happen on land. Wells's vision was of invincible ironclad vehicles storming across no man's land impervious to machine gun fire. Ambitious soldiers and politicians dreamt of making Wells's prediction come true. One was First Lord of the Admiralty Winston Churchill. In February 1915, he set up the top secret Land Ships Committee to develop prototype fighting vehicles. The first one was a tiny little three-tracked vehicle, like a little tricycle on tracks called the Kill and Straight Tractor. This was used mainly just to sort of charge about and show people what a track vehicle could do. Then someone came up with the even more idiotic idea that they nicknamed Elephant's Feet. And Elephant's Feet was one tractor only, with half a dozen things like telegraph poles dangling from the sides. And it, the idea was that if the thing itself, the machine, fell into a hole, the pole would kind of intercept the fall and act to pole vault the tractor over the hole. There's no way it was going to work. And the whole of the leader to the true tank is filled with these gorgeous but bizarre vehicles. The breakthrough came in Lincoln. In the autumn of 1915, Land Ships Committee designers William Tritton and Walter Wilson unveiled the world's first tank. It had a revolutionary system of caterpillar tracks. This forerunner of all modern tanks was nicknamed Little Willie. Well, Little Willie was a good idea if you just wanted something to trundle across flat country and cross barbed wire. But trenches were Little Willie's downfall. The fact that the thing could not cope with the high parapets the Germans had built in front of their trenches, if Little Willie had gone over, it would have just pitched in nose first, and that would have been the end of it.